My journey started 20 years ago in 1995 when I left the American White Power Skinhead Movement that I'd helped build. But before I joined at 14 years old in 1987, I was a relatively normal kid. Unfortunately, like other teenagers, I was bullied. I became a skinhead because I felt disconnected from society and I wanted to belong so desperately to something and I wanted to do something that mattered. And about midnight, we walked into this McDonald's and we saw three African-American youths in line. And I walked up to one of them and I took the hat off of his head and I put it on my head. And I said, this is my hat now. They immediately ran out of the McDonald's. And we immediately chased them. It wasn't until we crossed the street when one of those individuals turned around and fired six shots at us from his pistol and missed. And we didn't break a stride to continue to tackle this person and beat him to the ground senselessly. And I remember thinking at one point when I was kicking him that this could have been my brother, that it could have been my son. And for just a moment, I connected with that individual as he looked up to me asking for mercy. But I quickly took those feelings and I pushed them aside because I had a mission. But it left an impression on me. And throughout those seven years, I continued to have those moments of clarity that began to build. Had I taken the time to understand and to educate myself and to not be afraid of something that was different than me, perhaps I wouldn't have gone down that road. And I started to distance myself from the movement. I had lost everything. I had lost my parents because I had alienated them from my circles and I didn't have a good relationship with them anymore. I would lost my wife and children because my transformation out of the movement didn't happen fast enough. And not only did I have to start from ground zero to regain all that back, I had to climb out of the hole that I had built for myself because I was a racist and everybody knew it. White supremacy has now gone into the mainstream. We see People who have graduated from skinhead groups and neo-Nazi groups and KKK groups go into biker organizations. They've gone into organizations like the Tea Party and become the extreme members of the Tea Party. The ideology has grown, it's spread. And while numbers in these organizations has gone down over the last couple years, actual recruitment has gone up. So what can we do? There are some amazing organizations out there like the Simon Wiesenthal Center and the Anti-Defamation League and government organizations who are keeping an eye on the neo-Nazi threat, the white supremacist threat in this country. In 2010, I co-founded an organization, a nonprofit called Life After Hate. Groups like Life After Hate are there to support people and to, to educate people who might be at risk of going down that lifestyle. We're also there to do interventions. In your children, in young people, if you see drastic changes in personality, if you start to see withdrawal happen, if you start to see collecting of guns or paraphernalia and the, you know, the typical warning signs and the language changes, those are all indicators that something is not right. Because people only do something, they only work, walk into a church and murder people, or they only behead somebody if they're not happy, if something is missing in their life. Happy people do not commit tragic mass shooting acts. In most of these cases, when we have a lone wolf or an active shooter situation, they've told the people around them, they've told the bystanders in their life that they're gonna do this. But because we're sometimes too afraid to throw our children under the bus or to turn them in or to be the friend that rats out the friend, we don't do that. We need to start taking these threats seriously. And I urge you to just take that one step. If you find somebody who's ignorant or if you feel ignorant on a subject yourself, educate yourself. Take that extra step, because change is possible. 20 years ago, I didn't believe that, but here I am to tell you about it.